Hi, I'm Lindsay. And I'm Marshall. Welcome to Tumble, the show where we explore stories of science discovery. Today we're talking about bubbles. Yay, just saying the word bubbles makes everyone happy. (laughs) Bubbles just fill us with delight and wonder. But what's the science behind them? We're going to turn our listeners' bubbling curiosity into a scientific quest for bubble discovery. Right after this. Okay, so today we have two questions about bubbles. Sounds like some double bubble trouble. (laughs) Let's hear our listeners' bubble questions. Marlo sent us hers from a park. Hi, my name is Marlo. I am six years old, and I was wondering, why do bubbles have shadows? Marlo had observed that bubbles cast just an outline of a shadow on the ground. She had an idea of why. Bubbles have shadows because they're a type of liquid, and liquid not most of the time has shadows, but sometimes when it's mixed in stuff, it does. Huh, so she thinks liquid doesn't usually have shadows, but bubbles might have some other ingredients too. So, like, what's the next bubble question? This one's from Abbott, who sent us this question from what appears to be just after a bath. My name is Abbott. I'm four and a half years old. And my question is, why do bubbles pop? And I think I know why. Because when they hit hard things, they pop and they have a lot of moisture and oxygen inside them. Well, he's got like a whole bath time bubbly theory. So let's ask our listeners, how would you answer these questions? Why do bubbles have shadows and why do bubbles pop? Take a moment to think about it because we'll be back with an honest-to-goodness bubble scientist. Bet you didn't know those existed. They do. To find the answers to Marlo and Abbott's bubble questions, I called up Dr. Bubbles. Wait, so there's somebody who's actually like Dr. Bubbles? Was he like John Bubbles? <laughs> His name is actually Justin Burton, but he told me that we could call him Dr. Bubbles, and given the opportunity, we're going to. I will respond to Dr. Bubbles. That's right. So that's amazing. Is he an actual doctor of bubbles? He doesn't help bubbles with their boo boos, but he does study them. Well, bubbles are really fascinating objects. I mean, they're, they're liquids, but the film thickness is much thinner than the width of a human hair. And he said bubbles are serious science for physicists like him, who study how matter and energy interact. So physically, they're just a really kind of interesting state of matter almost that have been fascinating scientists for more than, you know, hundreds of years. So for hundreds of years, physicists have been like, ooh, Bubbles. <laughs> yeah, they've been existing in a perpetual state of wonder and delight. <laughs> As I imagine any physicist would. <laughs> so that brings us to Marlowe's question about the mysterious bubble shadows. Yeah, that's a really interesting question, and I know exactly what Marlowe is talking about. So like anything else, if it blocks the sunlight, it's going to make a shadow. That's what a shadow is. But most of the light gets through the center of a bubble because bubbles are transparent. But when light hits the sides of the bubble at an angle is where it gets weird. So the edges of the bubble end up bending light away in all different directions. And thus, when you get to the ground, there's no light there anymore and it appears very dark. That's why it makes a shadow that looks like a ring. Ah, So the bubble is kind of like moving the light away from the edges so it doesn't pass through. So Marlo's question has shown us that bubbles are not as simple as meets the eye. So now we're going to make our way to answering Abbott's question through Dr. Bubbles actual bubble research, which begins in a place we used to live. I was at an academic conference in Barcelona, Spain, and we were just kind of walking from one end of the city to the other, and I saw more than one kind of street performer who was blowing these giant bubbles just in the park. Bubble performers, they're everywhere. Yeah, and you spot them when you see these giant bubbles floating through the air and kids chasing them on the ground, just full of joy. So Dr. Bubbles saw this and he thought, 
well, he thought like a bubble scientist. And I just was fascinated about how they could make such large bubbles. And I thought it would be a great problem for a student to work on. Okay, so I see how this connects to the question of why do bubbles pop? Because the key to making a big bubble is to have it not pop, or at least that's one key. (laughs) Yeah, and the answer is not obvious. So Dr. Bubbles got home from his trip and started doing some light research. All research starts with a let me Google this moment. At first you might be like, is this a serious scientific project? And you kind of have to go in blind and say, well, I, I don't know, but I'm certainly interested in it. People have been blowing giant bubbles for years, but Dr. Bubbles wanted to know how it works. And that's a question he couldn't find with a Google. Sometimes you don't know the answer beforehand. If we knew what we were doing, it wouldn't be called research, as the saying goes. That's a good saying. I think I'd like that on a (laughs) t-shirt. Me too. Anyhow, all of Dr. Bubbles' Googling did lead somewhere. So if you're interested in making your own bubbles, I highly suggest you'd search for the Soap Bubble Wiki, and I think you'll find it immediately. (laughs) The Soap Bubble Wiki. Of course there's a wiki, but what is it? (laughs) Well, I googled it and I did find it immediately. It's a website where bubble enthusiasts around the world have contributed their best tips and photos of truly ginormous bubbles. (laughs) So when Dr. Bubbles discovered the Soap Bubble Wiki, he found that a lot of recipes were using one special ingredient made from seeds that's called guar powder. It's a powder, you soak it in water, and then if you soak it for like 10 minutes, it gets this kind of goopy mixture because all these long chain polymers come out of the seed and into the solution with the water. Okay, so I just heard him turn on the science when he said long chain polymers. So that that seems like a a thing that someone should explain, (laughs) ideally to me. It's a little bit of bubble chemistry. So you can actually think of polymers as like squiggly, worm-like molecules. And then when you put them in a liquid and you stretch it out, these polymers can entangle with one another. These squiggly molecules grip together, making stronger connections between them. And when they stretch, they tend to stabilize the film and give it some elasticity, make it more like a rubber sheet, if you will. Ah, So these squiggly little polymers help hold giant bubbles together. Right. And importantly, they keep holes from forming. Of course, if a hole does form, well, then your bubble's going to pop, as Abbott asked about. Okay, so bubbles can just like spontaneously form a hole and then they pop. Yeah, I think that most of us who have blown bubbles have observed that some bubbles pop right away and others float on for a long time. And it's not just about how you blow the bubble. It's the formula of the bubble juice. But it's these squiggly, worm-like molecules that really help it maintain its stability. Okay, so we know the secret ingredient to keep a bubble from popping, which is long-chain polymers. (laughs) Good to know. I'll just pick those up in the grocery store. But how do you make it big? That's another clue you can find on the internet. So if you kind of look at pictures of world record bubble makers... They're holding these sticks that are 15 feet long, 20 feet long in some cases. Wow. So these definitely aren't your average bubble wands that you get at a store unless you have a store that has 15 foot long bubble wands. Well, to find these long, long bubble wands, Dr. Bubbles passed by the toy aisle and went straight to the sports department. So we got two fishing poles and like a big rope and you dip the rope into a bucket and you extend the rods and you have to make like a big giant circle to try to make a big giant bubble. Okay, so his experiment, he's just out there on the university lawns making bubbles with fishing poles. (laughs) Yes, but they also use some actual lab equipment in the experiment too. In the laboratory, we wanted to understand how these soap films get thinner over time. In other words, how do you measure the stretchiness of the bubbles as they move? Yeah, how do you do that? That sounds hard to measure. And so if you shine this certain type of infrared light on a soap film, a lot of that light gets absorbed, but some of it makes it through. And so by shining light on it and then measuring how much of the light gets through, you can then determine how thick the soap film is. Okay, so that's kind of like Marlowe's bubble shadows. Exactly. That concept of light hitting the bubble 
proved very useful when it came to understanding the physics of giant bubbles. And so we set up this um, optical system to measure the thickness of a soap film versus time and watch how does it get thinner and thinner and thinner and eventually it pops. Okay, it seems like all of this is coming together or could we say it's, it's popping? Is that what people are saying? I could see Dr. Bubbles having a theme song called It's Poppin'. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, the last step was to create the perfect bubble recipe. It turns out there's a sweet spot for these polymers. If you don't put enough of these polymer molecules in, well, then it won't help you make a giant bubble. But if you put too much in, then your bubble solution turns into this kind of goopy mess, which is just too thick to work with. Okay, so you got to get the right amount of squiggle in your bubble juice. Exactly. So they mixed up bubble solutions with different amounts or concentrations of guar powder. So there's kind of a sweet spot of the right concentration, and we had to find it. And did they find it? They did. They came up with a scientifically tested recipe for giant bubbles. Its ingredients are guar gum, Dawn dish soap, rubbing alcohol, baking powder, and of course, water. Did they publish this bubble recipe in a scientific journal, or did they just go straight to the, like, how to make bubble stuff for kids? They published it in a legitimate scientific <laughs> journal, so this is now officially known to science, and the paper is called How to Make a Giant Bubble. I'll just say that is the clearest title to a science <laughs> paper I have ever read. That's definitely a paper a person who goes by Dr. Bubbles would write. <laughs> Maybe the one that he was born to write. <laughs> But even more than the bubble recipe, it showed that science discovery can start with a simple question. I mean, I think it reinforced that sometimes you just kind of have to follow your own curiosity and see where it takes you. It took him to being called Dr. Bubbles, which is probably the cutest superhero name ever. <laughs> so what does Dr. Bubbles the superhero do like when he's going to save a city? Well, he gets like a lot of bubbles around the bad guy and then he's surrounded by children trying to chase them and pop them. <laughs> and then he can't get anywhere because there are too many children in the way. <laughs> Slash also he becomes delighted. I just gives up and everybody's <laughs> playing with bubbles. <laughs> Blow giant bubbles. We're sharing the full recipe for Dr. Bubbles Bubbles in the episode description and on our website. Try it out and see how it works. Then experiment with the ingredients. What happens if you take one out or change the amount of each ingredient? Keep track of your results in a notebook. What questions do you have about what each ingredient does? Let us know how your bubble experiment goes and send us pictures of you making giant bubbles at tumblepodcast at gmail.com. We would love to see it. Thanks today to Dr. Justin Burton, a.k.a. Dr. Bubbles, Associate Professor of Physics at Emory University. Special thanks to Marlo and Abbott for sending in your amazing bubble questions. We also spoke with Dr. Lee Wei Tan for this episode, who did an amazing TED Talk on bubbles you should definitely check out. We'll have that interview with Lee Wei Tan on a special bonus episode where she talks about how she invented edible bubbles. That's available to patrons who pledge just $1 or more a month to support the show. That's at patreon.com slash tumblepodcast. We'll have free resources on our website, including the giant bubble recipe and awesome videos of Dr. Bubbles and his team doing their bubble experimentation. Sarah Robertson Lentz edited this episode and made the episode art. Eric Kuhn is our engineer and mixer. I'm Lindsay Patterson, and I wrote this episode. And I'm Marshall Escamilla, and I made all the music. Tumble is a production of Tumble Media. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned for more stories of science discovery.